Does this not look quite right to you? Do you think it should look a little bit more like this? You don't see stars in the daytime on Earth, not because they're not there, but because the atmosphere is a glow with scattered light from the sun. If you take away the atmosphere, the sun will still be there, but the sky goes dark. That's what the folks get when they go to the edge of the atmosphere, and they're calling that the edge of space. But when you get to the edge of the atmosphere, the atmosphere is no longer between you and the rest of the universe. And the stars reveal themselves just as they would at night. Since the moon has no atmosphere, then a daytime picture, if you're there in the daytime of the moon, you see a full night, night sky of stars, mm -hmm. even with the sun in the sky as well. But when you get to the edge of the atmosphere, the stars reveal themselves just as they would at night. If you're there in the daytime of the moon, you see a full night, night sky of stars, mm -hmm. even with the sun in the sky as well. Mm -hmm. Even with the sun in the sky as well. Whilst from in Mark space, Cameron. This is from Mark Cameron. Whilst in space, have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void? Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, because yeah, you time. can see yeah, because yeah. you can see the stars. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, you know. Hey, what's your odds? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So yeah, because you can see yeah, because you can see the stars. Oh yeah. You know, you know. Hey, what's your odds? Yes, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah, because yeah, you time. can see, yeah, because yeah, you can see the stars. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah, the stars. Yeah. We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon. The sky is uh, a deep black. Uh, when viewed from the moon as it is when viewed from uh, cislunar space, the space between the Earth and the moon. And we could not see stars. It's, it's not a black a cool void. Thing. I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the, there's all the stars there. And the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. And when you're, when you're in space and you're looking into deep space and you're on the sun side of the orbit, uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight so you can't see any stars just like here on Earth. Yeah, you can, and there's more than stars. You can see planets. You can right. see moons. You, you see the ga the gas uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky Way galaxy. Yeah, yeah, you see galaxy. the Magellanic. And I was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, and there's more than stars. You can see planets. You can right. see moons. You, you see the, ga the gas uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky Way galaxy. Yeah, yeah, you see galaxy. the Magellanic, and I was that. Yes, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. No, Miss Vee. And I have Miss Vee. Yeah, it's another one. Nay, nay, you can't. And there's more than stars. You can see planets. You can see moons. You see the ga the gas. Uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky yeah, Way galaxy. Yeah, yeah, you see the Magellanic. You're, when you're in space and you're looking into deep space and you're on the sun side of the orbit, uh, the sunlight washes out all the starlight so you can't see any stars just like here on Earth. Pretty much all the time you can see yeah. the stars. Yeah. Then when you look out into deep space away from the sun, it's the darkest black you can imagine. Just the inherent beauty of it, the velvet, bottomless bucket of the universe. In like, just hanging there in a vast sea of darkness and the most frightening darkness that you could ever imagine. And pretty much all the time you can see yeah. the stars. You see, the vibration of my voice box makes the air vibrate between us. Then when the air vibrates your eardrum, you hear what I'm saying. But maybe you've seen a demonstration of a bell under a glass jar. With normal air inside the jar, you could hear the bell clearly. But when the vacuum pump drew the air out of the jar, there was nothing inside to carry the vibrations of the bell. Nothing until the air was let back into the jar. They can't see your photo numbers. And this is clear tube number two. 
sounds in space um, it's odd to have a hammer or a metal tool and bang it against something and hear absolutely nothing you can you know sound won't travel in a vacuum so there you are outside and you could be hitting something no sound at all in space since there's no uh, there's no atmosphere there's no air mm -hmm. if you bang on something while you're doing your spacewalk you will not be able to hear that and this leads us to the dilemma of our final segment. All modern astronauts, such as Piers Sellers and Mike Massimino, claim to hear absolutely nothing when they're out on the International Space Station in the vacuum, banging away with metal tools and objects, whereas during the Apollo missions, all kinds of sounds have been recorded that should not be possible if they are on the moon in the vacuum of space. That does not sound like the spacesuit acting like a drum at all. It sounds like a metal hammer striking a metal object repeatedly with authority. Pictured is Alan Bean during Apollo 12 striking a metal core tube into the so-called lunar surface with a metal hammer. This is an interview with Apollo astronauts Alan Bean and Pete Conrad done by the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal. They are once again taking the position that the sound is coming through the hand and transmitting into the microphones in the helmet. Alan Bean says, I would have said it wasn't possible. And Pete Conrad responds, the other guy can't hear it. If the sound is coming through Alan Bean's microphone, then like his voice, it must be transmitted directly into the headset of Pete Conrad. So his statement makes no sense. Alan Bean's statement makes a lot of sense since it would not have been possible in a vacuum. When Bean says, I would have said it wasn't possible, he has science on his side. And he also has NASA on his side, at least up until August 19th, 2011. And this brings us to the most important graphic in the film. This is a web page that has been disappeared from the internet by NASA as of August 2011. It was at NASA.gov running concurrently with the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal between 2009 and September 2011. However, this page, which was created for children, you can see the banner at the top, Lunar Science for Kids. This page directly contradicts the assertions made in the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal concerning the hammering sounds in Apollo 12, 15, and 17. This page talks about the science involved with sound on the moon, and it does so correctly. And that is why NASA has disappeared it from the web. The contradiction between the journal and this page was brought up in the very popular Moon Zoo Forum. And that is where I first became aware of the situation. Reader Tom 128 pointed out the contradiction between the site for children and the journal. And I went looking for the site for children and could not find it. I then went to my favorite research tool, the Wayback Machine at archive.org, and I was able to find an old version of the page that NASA did not clean up. And whenever I see information go missing from the web, it always starts me thinking. And this was the genesis of the film. At that moment, I became a NASA moon hoax researcher. You've seen the image on the right of the graphic before. That is Alan Bean hammering a core tube during Apollo 12. And this is the sound of such hammering. The graphic is problematic for NASA because of the contradiction to the journal and the graphic is correct science. And I quote, 
Sound needs something to travel through to get from one place to another. On the moon, since there is no air, sound cannot travel above the surface. So, there are no sounds on the surface of the moon. When the Apollo astronauts were out on the moon's surface, they could only talk to each other and to mission control by using the radios in their air-filled helmets. Even when the astronaut in the photo to the right hit a metal tube into the ground with a hammer, no sound was made. All of the sounds so far analyzed were made